Good afternoon and welcome to episode number 605. And the topic today is stop, making, stop waiting for someone else to make you happy. It's kind of a second part from yesterday, but I want to get into a bit deeper because for some of you, you didn't get the message. <laughs> Before I jump into that fun stuff, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. and I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which led to these talks I started over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And done them every day for quite a while now, which is why they're called, um, which is why I'm up to episode number 605, 605. So quite a few. So the topic today, just for the fun and entertainment of value, is stop waiting for someone else to make you happy. You're not doing that, are you? No, of course not. If you are, if you're tempted to wait for that special someone to show up so you feel happy, euphoric, loved, inspired, uplifted, able to do everything you want to do, stop it. <laughs> Put it simply. Okay, I'm good. Right, I'll sign off. See you tomorrow. No, <laughs> it's so tempting to go like, that's it. Leave it at that point. But I'm, I'm, I was saying, I need to. No, I don't need to. I'd like to give you some some keys, some pointers, some in, information that might assist you in one not being so, um, what's we're looking for? Desperate for that person to show up to make you happy. And two, perhaps more importantly, know why you don't need to do that. That you, in fact, may be in a place where you can support yourself. Now, I talked yesterday about, I think yesterday, yesterday day before, I think it was yesterday about um, why being single isn't such a bad thing. Or should say, why, why, because, because there's a, um, there seems to be among in the adult population a, um, I want to say patina is the wrong word. There's another word I'm looking for. A, um, oh, it's the word. It's a word. You'll come back to me. But there's a, there's a view people have of people who are single when they're over, over say, 30 or 40, where they think there's something wrong with them, especially if they're not divorced. Oh, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other conversation. I mentioned before that I've, I'm in that boat. So I've received some feedback, which includes looks and words and comments and um, pitying hugs. Yeah, even that. But that was yesterday. So today we're talking about the speak about waiting for someone to make you happy. Because the thing about relationships for a lot of people is, and true of actually a lot of things, like when you have enough money, when you have the right job, and when you have the right person, it's all in the same bucket. That at that moment, at that time, you will feel happy. Like it's their providing of something to you that makes you feel happy. And the bottom line is very simple. It ain't up to anybody or anything else to make you happy. Yes, you can feel happy because something else happened, but, and a big, big but, <laughs> a big issue with this is the temptation for a lot of people is to go, I'll put off my happiness till that shows up. Now, first of all, one of my, one of the favorite quotes I love, I remember hearing from somebody, I don't remember who the author is, is be happy for no reason. Brilliant. Because that's the point, ultimately, is happiness is not up to anything or anyone else. It can be, you can be happy for no reason because happiness is an inside job. And I'll get more into that in a moment. But a lot of people, as I mentioned before, are wired up this way. And, and it is partly a codependent trap, which I've talked about before as well. And codependence basically is depending upon somebody else to have something for you. And your emotional state is dependent upon them doing or not doing that certain thing. So when the lottery ticket doesn't win, do you feel despondent, disappointed, upset, frustrated, suicidal? When your partner doesn't show up when you thought they would, or when you don't have a relationship and you're saying, I need to be married this year or I'm in trouble that's not healthy and it puts you in this wonderful place of codependence which I akin to being which I uh, which I speak to it being as akin to being a victim and I want to use the word, the word in victim intentionally because people go no I'm not a victim I take care of my life I run my sh I run my stuff maybe if you have anything about your inner state dependent upon something out there happening or not happening again relationship could be a job could be money could be spiritual practice, could be physical health, could be anything, could be the political system, even. Yeah, even that. If you're feeling that when that changes, then you'll feel happy, that whole wiring, that whole framing, that, that logical discussion 
is based upon you believing you can't do it for yourself. Or more accurately, you believing or actually you thinking you won't do it for yourself. Won't not can't because everybody can. Even though some people choose to say they can't because of some clinical diagnosis says they can't. I'm not going to go there just yet. When you're in a situation where you're a victim to something else, and I mean that intentionally, where you're dependent upon somebody else or something else, somebody or something else happening, so then you will feel something. That means your happiness, your feeling something, is dependent upon something else happening. Again, codependence, which means if it doesn't happen, you don't have any control over your feel because you feel bad. So if it does happen, you feel good. If it doesn't happen, if you feel bad. Now you put anything that that something can be anything in your life. So let me just take you this way. Let me illustrate this for you. Let me have you illustrate for yourself. Think of something in your life that you have been waiting for, or or planning to do, or trying to make happen, or wishing would happen, or put some effort into making happen. And notice how your emotional state is tied to it. For the advanced students, <laughs> this may not be relevant, but for most people in the world, which may include you, you may have some emotional investment tied up in that situation, that circumstance, that thing that you want to have happen. Be it, and again, relationship, money, whatever it is. And until that does happen, you're sitting waiting for something. You're not feeling happy, you're not feeling joyful, you're not feeling anything. You're just feeling that you have to wait till it happens, then you can feel happy. This cycle of what well, is insanity, but this cycle of waiting, 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 waiting for something to happen is a place where you get nothing done. So first of all, you're wasting your time, not getting things done. Secondly, you're in this place of dependence on something else happening before you can feel something. And again, it makes you a victim because literally what happens out there dictates how you feel. You don't have choice over that, or I should say you don't choose to have choice over that. And choice is key in this. By sitting in a place where you are dependent upon something else happening outside of you, you never have control. And you're a victim of what happens or doesn't happen. I think you're getting my point on this one. So a couple of things I dropped along the way. One of which is this belief structure, which is that somehow that person, when they show up, is going to make me happy. First of all, it's not their job. And secondly, it's not your job. Oh, sorry, it's not your... Um, it's not effective for you to hold that space. Now, I used to have those for myself. I used to think that when I was in love, I'd feel so much better. I'd feel loving, I'd feel happy, I'd feel joyful. And when I wasn't, I'd feel depressed. And if you've been there yourself, I understand how you feel. I've been there. Not anymore. By any stretch of imagination, I look forward to relationships that's adding to what I'm already doing. And that's the key. Anything that you're waiting for to have happen out there be it career, be it relationship, be it money, be it health, whatever those things are, I was going to say must be, would be most effective if it was additive to what you're already doing or being or how you're feeling so that it's not something you must have. You're not, you're not waiting for it to happen for you to feel better, feel good, feel whole. If you're dealing with an emotional, sorry, if you're dealing with a health challenge, you don't have to be emotionally distraught about it. Yes, you need to be responsible for it, but you still feel happy in the process. You're happy for small miracles. I'll get to that one in a moment. It's this reminder that your ability to be happy is absolutely up to you and nobody else. I'll say it again. Happiness is up to you and nobody else. You can feel any way you choose. You feel depressed if you want. You feel happy if you want. But the reality is you can do that independent of circumstance, independent of everybody else, independent of that special somebody you're waiting for. It isn't their job, it isn't a responsibility, and you don't need to put your needs out there. Now, it's nice to have relationships where you can have willingness to support each other, yes, but that's not this. This is you learn to be happy on your own, independently of relationship, and if you're single now, especially now, I trust you can learn how to be happy, fulfilled, and joyful in your life as it is, because first of all, it takes away that codependent trap that you'll fall into, so you don't become a victim. And secondly, if you're single, it makes you more attractive. Ooh, there's a good one. Because when you're fully in, in, embracing your life and, and, and investing in your life and making things happen and being joyful and experiencing everything along the way, 
when someone meets you they're going to be like wow that's a spat pump that's happy they're a great person i want to get to know them what's one of the most 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 effective ways of flirt of being flirtable flirtable <laughs> attractive to relationship is that simple practice so being happy for no reason being fulfilled in who you are and not needing something else out there to make you feel happy is the best way to attract relationship and it's also the best way not to need a relationship and that's both the good things by the way because you don't need a relationship is the best time you can have a relationship when you need one it tends to be elusive and if you need one you're gonna get one that's codependent and if you get one that's codependent you're a victim again i've gone around that one five times i think you've got my point so what to do um there was two things in there coming up what was one of them so first of all learning how to practice on your own to be fulfilled to be happy to be confident in who you are comes from filling up your own tanks first like your own fuel tanks and that's really the thing is again those inner fuel tanks of happiness joy support appreciation com compassion caring etc etc are all self-refillable you can be added to by somebody else but it's not their job to make you feel better in any of those areas that's all up to you and you can have that you can do that it's actually very easy here's some ways you can do it when you feel out of sorts be, be aware of it this then this is one of the things most people when their emotions change are not usually not usually consciously aware to witness it they may be aware it's changing but they don't feel they have control over it that's another victim role by the way when you can be in a place where you can witness your emotions changing from happiness to sadness or from excitement to boredom or whatever that is when you're aware you can watch the transition of change you can watch the emotional change the energetic shift and by so doing you can catch yourself from changing meaning that if you're happy and then something happens to distract you maybe it's a phone call or some or an email you received or you just went outside and it was like oh the weather sucks and you felt depressed notice that you chose to feel less than happy because of circumstance it's the first step second step is to then change that so when you go outside and it doesn't feel like the way you want it to feel or the email doesn't appeal to you or that phone call didn't work whatever it was you go you know what that didn't work i didn't like that but i still don't feel bad about it it's me i'm feeling happy i'm okay again happy for no reason also means happy in spite of no spite's the wrong word happy independent of that's a better way of putting it when you can be happy independent of circumstance and happy to be free to be yourself that's a healthy choice and a healthy way to be another thing i can recommend and i'll put the link in the comments for this because i'm promoting my stuff all the time because the way i do things um oh that's not really mentioned too part of the joy of being happy in who you are is to love who you are to respect who you are to appreciate who you are and to recognize that who you are is very deserving of the best and that shifts your energetic by the way to be more attractive to what you really want i have a little thing called a, a guided self love a little thing i have a <laughs> a, a um, guided self-love meditation practice that I have on my website I'll put the link in the comments that is a step it's a simple step-by-step -step process to do every day and for 30 days that will change your relationship with yourself trans transformatively massively and wonderfully um, I'll put that in the, yeah so I'm just thinking I was the thing I was thinking about earlier just came back out to remember so another thing you can do such a simple practice you do for yourself is if you don't already do so keep a gratitude journal or a gratitude jar the same thing applies different different me mechanics though so if you choose to do this it's easy to do and it's actually it's actually one of the keys in my rocket 2019 playbook which i'll put a link in the comments for that i've got a new program launching which is part of which is that and more a gratitude gratitude journal and you could even call it a happiness journal if you want to it's your choice of doing that is you simply keep a journal by your bed to something you do at the end of the day to review your day and highlight at least three things at least three actions three experiences three things you did or didn't do had or didn't have whatever it was at least three things that you're grateful for it could be you got up on time it could be that you had the major deal happen today it could be that because you go play with kids in the park whatever that is for you that is something you can feel grateful for goes in the journal the other option which I mentioned is the gratitude jar now this one I like more because it's a very visual thing and it's a very physical thing because gratitude journal is great because it's pen and paper you write things down and it's good to do that not on your computer by hand because it engages more muscles and it's more in the body so you feel it 
Next level is to do a gratitude jar. It's what I'm doing right now as well. I've been started one uh, beginning of the year for buying my own process. And I'm doing it for the whole year. And basically what I'm t doing is getting a, um, it's getting color paper like this. And this is, this is not, this is not, um, um, it's not, there's not post-its. These are just, it's regular paper, just tucked here on the edge. Write on, write one gratitude, one thing you're thankful for on a piece of paper, fold it up, put it in the gratitude jar. Do three of those minimum a day. By the end of the year, if you're doing three a day, that's over a thousand pieces of gratitude you have. At the end of the year, you take the jar, open it up. Kind of a cool experience to go through a thousand items of gratitude you have. It's hard to be depressed when you do that. So it's, that's, that's therapeutic as well, by the way. So I recommend that as an option. Again, it's part of my Rocket 2019 playbook. I'll put the com link in the comments. It's one of the seven keys I provide. But those two things, self-love and, and gratitude alone will change the way you relate to yourself. And if you're somebody who's looking for ways to be better at liking it, appreciating who you are, those two will make a big difference. I highly, re highly recommend them. And also, again, by having these things in play, if, you start, if, it's, if you're grateful for what happens in your life and you love yourself, you become very attractive, as I mentioned earlier. Those two things will change your paradigm because what happens is people will start to like being around you. Especially if you're somebody who used to moan and complain all the time. If you start being grateful and loving yourself, the complaining will tend to go away. You'll tend to moan less and be more, be more um, nice to be around. And that makes you more attractive. So why not? So I think I've made my point clear enough. This, this is a simple practice. But once you take the reference from out there to in here, and that's the big shift from out there to in here is a massive shift. When you do that, your ability to give and receive expands, your ability to support yourself becomes stronger, and your ability to be in a relationship becomes healthier. That sounds pretty good. So with that, I think I've given you enough information for today. Um, this is part two from yesterday. I talked about being, why being single is good. This is a different part of it, which is really shifting the focus from out there to in here. If you're single, this is especially recommended because it will prepare you for a relationship in a whole new way and it will change the relationship you have for the better. I think that made, point, made my point. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, this is on Facebook Live first, by the way, and I'll give you the links for the Facebook Live, the replays there, my YouTube channel, and my podcast, so you know where everything is. So the first one on my Facebook page, my personal page is where I do them live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. This is one of what I do every day. You can find, if you want to join me live, you go to my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. At 5 p.m. Pacific time, join me live there. The replays go onto my personal page, sorry, onto my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. We find all of them in, in archive form with only a few other things in there, not so much other stuff. Second place you find them is on my YouTube channel, which is also my name, which is Barry Selby. You can search for my name on, on YouTube. And the playlist is called Messages for the Masculine. In fact, you can search for that messages from the masculine on iTunes you, oh, sorry on I'll get to that in a moment on YouTube and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch the playlist there but also on my podcast which is on iTunes which is called messages from the masculine subscribe to that you can get the audio versions of my talks Whew, I think that's everything I need to tell you I appreciate you being with me as always and um, I hope it's been a value to you I do invite comments questions and sharing with other people who might benefit from this please do that if you wish and any comments, questions, put them in the comments below, either here on Facebook or on YouTube as well. And I'll respond after I sign off. And again, I'll put the link in the comments for the Self Love Practice and the um, Rocket 2019 Playbook. Both easy access, very effective, simple tools you can change your life with. Sounds good to me. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I do invite you to take care of yourself and get started with gratitude. Gratitude journal, gratitude jar, or both, your choice. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.